What's up, you guys? It's Avery here bringing you guys a very interesting regional deck profile from the man, the myth, the legend, Asian Persuasion 2008. He went to a regional and he topped with 60 card fairy ties of the brethren counter the deck. <laughs> so, first we had this deck top, and now we have gadgets topping a regional, although apparently it was a six man regional. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to talk about that, but let's talk about something else that is very funny. <laughs> so Asian Persuasion went to regional in Iowa, and he came in 21st place. Uh, I think he said it was a top 32 cutoff for invite with Counter Fairy. He said it was kind of a last-minute decision. He wasn't able to play Minerva, so yeah, I guess he wasn't able to play Light Sworn or whatever deck he wanted to play. Um, but he ended up playing 60-card Fairy Counter instead with three copies of Ties of the Brethren. And... Counter Fairy has always been one of those decks that I always wanted to mess around with when Guiding Ariadne first came out. Um, and, like, I picked up a copy of Guiding Ariadne, but then, like, I never picked up the rest of the stuff for it. It was a deck that I kind of tested with, but never really, like, took it competitively. Um, but it's always been one of those decks that I've just, I've always liked playing. <laughs> like, it's, it's always fun just to be able to summon out a Bountiful Artemis with five back row and just kind of give your opponent the middle finger and tell them to try and make a play. So, I wanted to go over his deck and just kind of discuss it and give my thoughts. Because I do think that this build is very interesting. We haven't seen really Counter Fairy creep up in quite some time. It's kind of one of those decks where, since it's so stun-based... It's kind of like how Gadgets used to be back in like 2008, 2009, 2010 era, where they would kind of creep up, get a couple invites, and then they would kind of creep away back into their hole. And then you wouldn't really hear from them again for a few years. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and dive into this. I also have uh, some counter truck cards pulled up on the side. Uh, just two of them I want to go over um, that he could have thrown in maybe in place of like the Divine Wrath or Magic Drain. So let's go ahead and dive into this. He's playing two Thunder King. One Luster Pendulum, three Guiding Ariane, three Bountiful Artemis, two Honest, three Barrier Statue of the Heavens, and two Archfiend Eccentric. So, Barrier Statue of the Heavens, obviously, because you play all lights, and really the only other deck that will probably be playing lights is Blue Eyes, and Blue Eyes isn't too relevant right now. It's been kind of creeping up, but I mean, if you take this to a regional, you're going to be more worried about Paleozoic and all that other fun stuff. Um, so, Monster Lineup is pretty standard, not much to explain. For spells, you got one Rageki, Triple Desires for obvious reasons. Three Ties of the Brethren. Um, you can go summon Bountiful Artemis, activate Ties of the Brethren, get out and Honest, and like a Barrier Statue of the Heavens. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe if you have Ariadne on the board, you can't go Ties of the Brethren to get out like a Bountiful Artemis and an Honest, because uh, Guiding Ariadne is technically a Fairy Pendulum. Yes, it's a Fairy, but these aren't Fairy Pendulums, except for Guiding Ariane. So I don't know if you can use Ties of the Brethren on uh, Ariane. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and then we're playing 3 Carded Demise and just 2 Potted Duality, because uh, consistency is fun. 1 Moon Mirror Shield, 2 Necro Valley, and the Seal Void Calcos, because we got to be taking people's souls, guys. This is another reason why I like this deck, uh, or this build in particular, is because Asian Persuasion is playing like my... My number one favorite card next to Self Destruct Button, the Seal Void Calcos. Uh, for you longtime subscribers, you'll know why Self Destruct Button is one of my favorite cards. Um, but that's a different video for a different day. Uh, then we got two Quaking Mirror Force, two Mirror Force, two Phoenix Wing, just one Lost Wind, three D Barrier, one Compulse, one Imperial Order, uh, one Chaos Trap Hole, three Ultimate Providence, which is very good in this deck because. It's literally just a Solemn Judgment. A Spell Trap or Monster Effect activates. If you've got Guiding Area on board, you just activate it and destroy the card. Three Solemn Strike, one Divine Wrath. Three Cursed Seal, the Forbidden Spell. Such a good card, so underrated. Like, I love the fact that if they try and Twin Twister you and you have the Cursed Seal set and you chain it, they're locked out of their Twin Twisters for the rest of the duel. It's just such a good card. So underrated, though, just because of the fact that it's just so specific. Then we got one Magic Drain, three Dark Bribe, and Solemn Warning. For the extra deck, we have one Ignister, uh, the Utopia Package of Lightning, Utopia Ray, and Utopia, uh, Deltaros, Anti-Luminescent Knight, um, Malevolent Sin, pretty good card actually, you can detach and seize material, target one of your opponent's monsters, banish it till their next standby phase, and then at the end of the damage step, if he attacked, he gains 300 and his rank increases by 3, so after one attack, he becomes 2700, which is pretty cute. You got Heartland Draco, because you're going to have spells on the board with your field spells. Uh, Castell, Dire Wolf, uh, you could probably change this to the new Tornado thing coming out, Maximum Crisis, just because it pops back row. Um, I don't know if it's a light or not for a barrier statue, because all the light exceeds in this extra deck you can make with barrier statue on the field, because obviously they're light. 
Um, but you could obviously throw in Tornado if you wanted to. Then we've got Starleach Pilot Dynamo, uh, Sukiyomi, Emerald, Abyss Dweller, and Rhapsody. For the side deck, we got three Wiretap, two Chaos Trapple, a uh, second copy of the Moon Mirror Shield, three Twin Twister, and then he's playing the three stick and three chair. He said that he would change these to um, three fire and three ice hand just because he showed up late. Um, I don't know if he got a game one loss. I'm assuming he like showed up late round one or something, but he said he would play uh, the fire and ice hands. And personally, I would as well, just because of the fact I feel like playing the Star Seraph engine can potentially make your hands much more brickier uh, because the engine in and of itself is kind of bricky anyway. And in a 60 card deck like this, even Asian Persuasion said that it can be bricky. So I feel like this kind of just adds more brickiness to it. Uh, but that's just me. Now, some counter traps that I'm thinking that, personally, I would want to run, um, just because you're playing the one of Divine Wrath, and it's like, it's a one of in a 60 card deck. Same thing with Magic Drain. Like, me personally, I feel like I would have the potential to mill the Divine Wrath or Magic Drain off the desires um, before ever drawing them. And Magic Drain, you're already playing three Curse Seal and three Dark Bribe. How much more negation do you need? And Divine Wrath, you're already playing three Ultimate Providence. I would rather kind of just try and stop their plays. So for me personally, I would take out either Magic Drain and or Divine Wrath for uh, Grand Horn of Heaven. Uh, just because it was really, really good when it first came out. Whenever your opponent would special summon monster monsters during the main phase. Negate the special summon. If you do destroy that monster monsters, then your opponent draws a card. And then they have to end their main phase. So they go straight into their battle phase. So if you have Battle for Artemis on the field, you activate Grand Horn of Heaven. Uh... If they Pendulum Summoned out five, they're going to lose all five monsters, and then both of you will get to draw a card. And then another card that I was thinking about you could play, too, is, of course, Drastic Drop-Off. This card is so good in Counter Fairy, um, because it's it's pretty much a Ghost Ash, but in Counter Trap form. Uh, activate only when your opponent adds a card or cards from their deck to their hand, including drawing a cards or cards. Your opponent discards one of those cards. So they draw for turn after you set up your board, you activate Drastic Drop Off. They're down to four. They're down, well, I'm sorry, if they're going second, then they start off with five cards in their hand, and you get to draw an extra card because of Battle for Artemis. Um, there was some other good ones in here, such as. Um, <laughs> you could be that one guy that plays Negate Attack, then draw off of the Bountiful Artemis, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you could play Wiretaps in the main. Pulling the Rug is okay. I don't think it's as good as uh, Grand Horn of Heaven or uh, whatever I mentioned before, Jurassic Drop Off. Um, just because a, mo a monster's effect has to activate, um, and it has to be Normal Summon, and the majority of monster effects that activate are on the like, Special Summon. So, not all that good. So, yeah, you guys, let me know what you think in the comments below about this deck. I think this deck is a lot of fun. I'm going to be playtesting it probably a little bit tonight and tomorrow. Be taking people's souls with the Seal of Ori Calcos. Asian Persuasion, if you're somehow watching this, man, congrats to you. I've got respect for you, fam. <laughs> Keep topping with this deck because it's just it's a really fun deck to play. Um, it's so much fun to, you know, just drop like a Bountiful Artemis or a Barrier Statue of the Heavens in this case, set five or set four, whatever the case may be, tell the opponent to go. And, you know, yeah, you, you might brick a little bit, but, you know, that's what the side deck is for. And keep in mind, you are playing 60 cards, but you don't mind losing 10 or 20 with desires. So, anyway, that's it. Thank you guys for watching, as always, and subscribe if you have not already.